So we're moving in, we're starting a unit and it is on relations and functions. And it's basically, we're looking at right now, just the intro on what functions are. Relations are basically any set of ordered pairs, right? Relations are a collection of sets of ordered pairs. Right. And there's usually a way they relate to each other, like each one changes by two or something like that. But really, they're just a collection of ordered pairs. And when we think about those in terms of graphs, you'll think of them as like X, Y values. Right. And they're usually represented like your X value, your Y. They're just a collection of ordered pairs. Um, they can be expressed in all sorts of ways. You've seen them done as a table, right? You could have an X, Y table with like one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Um, they could be like a mapping where you have like A, B, C goes to X, Y, Z, right? Um, they could be a graph, which you've seen, right? You guys have plotted plenty an X, Y point onto a, a Cartesian coordinate plane, which is what this puppy is right here. Right, where you have your Y and your X axes. Um, and those are just ways that we can express, that we, we can visually express a relation. Um, we can also, express them in an equation, right? Which is what we're going to be working with mostly. When we talk about re relations, we need to talk about domains and ranges. Do any of you guys remember the expressions, at least domain or range? Even better if you remember what it is, but does anyone remember at least hearing those expressions before? That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Does anybody remember what they are? When we talk about domain, that is actually a good kind of, uh, Daryl, that's, that's not wrong at all, um, but it's a specific number right? It's a set of specific numbers. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're kind of using more the statistics definition of it, and that would be right. Um, the domain is all possible. Oops, sorry, that's one word, possible, not possible. All possible input values or anything that you could put in for X. Right. If we were thinking of it in terms of uh, plotted points on a graph, anything that X can be is our domain. It is a set of numbers of what X can be. So if I had, say, something graphed, I love that I have a little graph right here because I could use, say, I have something graphed like this, and I got a little arrow in this direction, this direction. Right. This arrow goes to negative infinity, right? It can go on forever. This arrow goes in this direction to positive infinity. It could go on forever. So if I was looking at the domain of this function, whatever it is, we don't know what the equation is. I can say that the domain is all real numbers because we could put in anything for X, right? It, it extends this way forever and it extends that way forever, right? A lot of times your domain is going to be all real numbers. Your range, on the other hand, is all of your possible outputs or your Y's. And the thing that's important to understand about the range is that it depends on the domain, right? What you get out depends on what you put in. If I have Y equals... 3x plus 7, 
what Y is going to be depends on what I make X. Does that make some sense? So your rain, your domain is your inputs or your X values and your Y's are your range, your output, right? So I don't know why it made a circle. It's supposed to be a parentheses. Um, And that's all we really need to kind of know when it talks about relations because we're moving into functions and those are just the things we need to know about relations going into functions. A function is a relation, right? Let's put that down. A function is a relation, right? It is a set of ordered pairs, right? But it has certain rules attributed to it. So the biggest one is it's a relation where every element of the domain, so all of our X values, I'll even put X in parentheses so that you remember, is paired with one and only one element from the range. Or our Y values. So if I'm looking at something and trying to determine if it's a function, say I have a set of ordered pairs, right? If I have 0, 1, negative 5, 2, 6, negative 2, what else? Um, 5, 7. And I want to determine if this is a function. All I have to do is look at all of my x values. Do any of my X values repeat? So what are our X values? They're always the first value in a set of ordered pairs. So this would be an X value, this would be an X, this one would be an X, and this one would be an X. Now I have a negative five and a five. Those are different numbers, right? They're not exactly the same. If all of my X values are different, I can automatically say this is a function right? Because what does it say? It says for every element of the domain X, it's paired with one and only one element from the range Y. So as long as I have all different X values, I know I've got a function, right? And I could write this in a couple forms. This is a set of ordered pairs, but I could also write it as a table. Right, I go x, y, I had what? 0, 1, negative 5, 2, 6, negative 2, 5, 7. And I could just look down. Do any Are any of my x's the same? No. Yes, it's a function. Don't worry about it. I can double up on y's. Like if my, if I had, if all of these were 2, it would still be a function as long as all of my X's were different. If I had a set of ordered pairs that were, say, negative 7, 2, um, 6, negative 1. Boy, I'm not good at parentheses today. 6, 2, negative 3, 9, right? So I have this set of ordered pairs, right? I can look at all of my x values. I've got negative 7. I've got 6. 
whoops, I got another six, right? These two are the same. That doesn't necessarily mean it's not a function, but if the Y values are different, then it is not a function because it says every X can only go to one element from the range Y. So if this was a function, these two numbers would also have to be the same. So we would go not a function. Does that make some sense? Awesome. There's a couple other ways. Sometimes graphically you'll have things expressed and there is something that we call the vertical line test, which we'll talk about a little more later on, but all you really need to know about the vertical line test is say I've got, that's what I like. I can change colors really easy. Say I've got this equation. Let's say I've got this. These are graphed on whatever equation it is I'm graphing. The vertical line test says that if I drop a vertical line anywhere onto the graph of the equation or the relation, if it is a function, it will only ever cross at one point. So if I were to take a vertical line and I were to just drop it through here anywhere, it would only be able to cross at one point on the graph. So if I look at this, anywhere I drop a vertical line, it's always only going to hit one spot on that pink line, right? So this is a function. And if you think about that, it makes sense because what I have, say here, let's pretend it went through like that. Here I have an X value, right? That X value only has one Y value. It's got that one point, right? This X value can only have one y value, right? If I drop a vertical line down here, I'm crossing here and here, not a function, right? Because this x that I've dropped a line through is hitting two y's, right? And that's the vertical line test. You can always test the graph of a function by doing a vertical line test. So if you've got a graph of a function, that's all you're looking at. If I drop a vertical line in there anywhere, is it going to hit more than one point? If the answer is yes, it's going to hit more than one point, not a function. If the answer is no, it's a function. And you're going to get on your homework, you're going to get things like this that are just asking the first few problems you're going to get are, is this a function or is it not a function? right? I don't even remember how many of those you get. I don't even remember if you actually get some of those because we move next into function notation. And I know for some of you, this is all basic. You've done it before, but I don't know where everybody's starting. So the idea is to get you guys all in the same spot. So when we're talking about function notation, that is how we write functions. You are very used to expressions like y equals 2x plus 7. In function notation, this right here is going to mean the same thing. f of x, which is how that's read, equals 2x plus 7. When you go to solve these, put a y in if you want, if it makes you more comfortable. Keep in mind, this is not F times X. And I know that's something you kind of have to get used to because you get used to that whole idea of something being against a parentheses, being multiplication. But what this is really is it's the name of the function. We're saying this is a function that we're calling F. Sometimes you'll see it as G of X or H of X, especially if you have more than one function, you need it to have a different name. But all it really means is this function that we're calling f that has an input of whatever's in the parentheses. That's your input value is x. 
right? That's all that means. X is the input and F of X is the output. Does that make a little bit of sense? Sometimes you're going to see it with like a number in here. So if I had say F of negative three equals two X plus seven, what that means is that wherever I see an X over here, I'm going to plug in negative three. One of the important things to remember, first of all, any time someone is telling you to evaluate anything in mathematics, it means they're giving you something to plug in for a variable and you're going to solve it. That's all it means. It means plug something in for that. Um, all this means though, is that wherever we have this X, we're going to plug in negative three. It is very important. This part is very important. Whenever you're plugging something in, always put it in parentheses. And the reason for that is if I didn't put this negative three in parentheses, I would have two minus three plus seven, which is a very different equation, right? But when we have two X, that means two times X. And if I just put it in as negative three, you would subtract it and it would change everything. So always put what you're inputting into parentheses. Um, it'll help you a lot along the way. So two times negative three, well, that's just negative six. Negative six plus seven just equals one. So we could actually say if we wanted that F of negative three equals one. Right. And that's just notation. That's just how you read it. What you're going to get for homework, all of that is going to be in evaluating functions. Um, so you're going to get stuff that's going to give you a function and then you are going to input values for those functions. So I'm going to put a couple of functions up here. I'm going to go F of X equals minus five X minus 14. And just to see something different, we'll also have G of X equals Let's go minus x squared plus 9x minus 1, right? So if I asked you what is f of negative 9, I'm going to use my f function, right? I'm going to use this, and I'm going to plug negative 9 wherever I have that X. So I would say it's minus five times negative nine minus 14. And I would look at that and I go negative five times negative nine. Well, that's positive 45 minus 14 gives me uh, 31. Does that make sense? It's really just plugging in numbers, but I'm gonna have you do some of these just to get you used to it. If I asked you for G of negative seven, we're gonna do that over here, right? We're gonna go minus negative seven squared. Notice I have a negative and a negative right there. Plus nine times negative seven, always put it in parentheses. And then we just go ahead and solve it. Well, I'll go, well, negative seven times negative seven is positive 49, but we do have to add that negative to it. So it becomes negative 49 plus nine times negative seven. Well, that's negative 63 minus one. And if I look at that, that's minus 50 minus another 63. That's negative 100. And 13. Are you allowed to use a calculator? Heck yeah, you are. Does this make some sense to you? Is anyone not following? Feel free to say no. No one's going to judge you. Some might, but there are others that will be like, I didn't know either and I just didn't want to say. All right, I am going to do one more. 
and then I'm going to let you go. Um, I haven't put your homework in yet, but I will assign it uh, as soon as I get done with you today. What if I had two bracket G of 12? Any idea what I'd do with something like that? Any guesses? I shut you all down with that question, right? You're like, that doesn't look like anything we've done. But if I just look at the inside, we would know what to do, right? We would take the G equation, right? And put 12 in wherever there was an X, right? Well, all this is saying is two times G of 12. So literally what I would do, I'm just gonna leave the two here and I'm gonna redo this equation as minus, well, X squared, well, we're gonna make that 12 squared plus nine times 12 minus one. And at the end, after we've solved this, we're just gonna multiply the whole thing times two, right? It looks ugly, but it's not that hard. 12 squared is 144, so I have negative 144. Nine times 12, what is nine times 12? Is that, I wanna say 108, am I right about that? Nine times 11 is 99, yeah, it's 108. Plus 108 minus one. And now we just have this problem, right, that we have to solve. 144, negative 144 plus 108 minus 1. I'm hoping I have the answer for that there. Oh, I do. It becomes 2 times negative 37. But that's just arithmetic, right? 144 minus 108. One, negative 144 plus 108 is negative 36. Minus 1 is negative 37. And then I'm just going to multiply that times 2. And I get negative 74. So even though all of this looks really complicated, if you look at the inside, you know, I'm just going to take that G function and I'm going to plug 12 in everywhere I see an X. Then at the end, just multiply everything by two. It's all those brackets mean, right? They're just another parentheses. So we can write this as two times g of 12 equals negative 74. Now, I don't need to go through all that. I could just write this. I could just do that. I feel like that's all the lesson you guys need for today. I don't want to take you any further than that. Um, that seems like a lot already because it's been your first lesson in a while. Um, I know, like I said, that some of you are beyond all of this, that you've done it all already. But the idea is to get everybody starting in the same spot or a little refresher for those who are behind. I'm going to stop the recording.